Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Cass. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I want to do a really fun little Alcohol Ink 101 video. I want to paint a really beautiful, colorful lime hanging on the branch with a bright yellow lime leaf. And uh, this is going to be super fun. We're not going to use any crazy tools. Sorry about the movement in the camera and whatever. I'm just uh, taking a little time outside before going to make the pizza. You're not going to need a lot of fancy tools. You're really just going to need a brush, some paper towel, some alcohol, a syringe, a spray bottle, um, a felt pad, but nothing too wild. We're not going to use any masking fluid here. We're not going to use any advanced techniques. Um, I am going to be using narrow paper, and so I'm going to be using some lifting techniques. If you are using Yupo paper, it'll be a little bit more difficult. Um, but you'll be able to lift off a little bit, so there's no... If you don't have narrow paper, absolutely still do the exercise. It'll still it'll still be beautiful. It just won't lift off as perfectly as it will uh, if you're using narrow. Um, if, you're, if you've got narrow, I'll power to you. Um, so yeah, really we're just going to be filling in the background with a felt pad and a bunch of neutral colored inks with some, uh, some green ink, make a nice neutral mossy kind of background and then we're going to essentially just erase out the edges clean up our lime and our stem and our leaf and then we'll go ahead and fill that in with a brush and it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be really easy it's going to be super juicy let's get right down to it okay so here is the image that i painted i want to show it to you in advance so you get an idea of the composition of what my drawing looked like. Now my drawing under here is just with a graphite pencil. Regular graphite pencil draws perfectly on narrow paper and it erases quite well as well. It, well, particularly with a gum eraser. I admit, as I always use a gum eraser, I haven't really tried different kinds of eraser on, uh, on narrow paper, but I can tell you that a gum eraser will take graphite off quite happily. So take as much time as you like to get your drawing to a place where you like it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start in with our felt pad. Make sure you've got gloves on for this because if you don't, you will get ink all over your fingers and maybe light yourself on fire or something. We should use gloves even when working with a brush. And I, yeah, probably about 80% of the time I do, but especially if you're ever going to do anything that where your ink is closer to your hand than at the tip of a brush, make sure you've got gloves on. So you see I'm just scumbling around. I'm using a, a technique that um, another artist that I like, uh, Sharon Harris, um, she's got a YouTube channel as well. She calls it pouncing, which I don't know if uh, she's the first one that coined that phrase, but I think it's adorable. It reminds me of a, a tiny little kitten jumping all over my page and uh, distributing ink, so I think that's cute. And you know, I like adorable stuff. Really do what you want with the colors in the background. Um, I wanted mine to be a nice muted green. I wanted it to be greenish, but I wanted it to be a lot more neutral than my subject because I know that my lime and my lime leaf are going to be similar in value to the background. Um, one is not going to be darker or lighter than the other, really not much. So I want to make sure that my background is very muted and that my subject is very bright. So you can see I'm going in here with, uh, with some black and darkening up my little background. Be patient here. Go in with green, go in with black. Work one way, work the other. Experiment with what works. Just dab your little felt pad around. Go all the way around. Don't worry about going over the edge of your lime and your leaf. Please do, because if you only try to work right up to the edge, it's never going to look like your background goes behind your subject ever. Don't worry, after we're going to take a little paper towel with wet with alcohol and we're just going to go and clean up the edge of the leaf and clean up the edge of the lime and the stem and everything. So just traipse right over your outline. If your ink is not too dark, you will still see the outline after of the pencil. We're going to wait till uh, the background is dry before doing this erasing, but as it only takes a minute to dry, really, uh, you don't have to wait a long time. So just wet your paper towel with a little bit of alcohol from your syringe and just wipe around inside your outline. Honestly, it alcohol ink comes off of Nara paper so easily that if you're using Nara, you'll see it just wipes off just like a dream right up to your outline and it's just perfect. If you're using another kind of non-porous support, just erase as best as you can. 
So I'm starting in here with a nice bright yellow. This is, uh, I'm using a Ranger by Tim Holtz colors, and this is Dandelion. However, use any nice, bright, cool yellow color with a lot of alcohol. You want this to be kind of like a watercolor wash, but as I'm saying this, the, you're kind of living on the wild side because with a lot of alcohol, you know it wants to run, but just put some alcohol, a lot of alcohol in your mix, or even a little bit. I've put a little bit right on my the center of my leaf and worked it out a little. Just so that you have a nice dilute yellow wash going over the entire leaf, the entire stem. This is going to be the base color for that area. Now I'm using a rather dilute green here, a bright yellow green. And that color, I'm making a nice thick band around the left hand side of the fruit and coming up the bottom, and just a little teeny tiny bit on the right top, just because of where the light's following. And the shine in the center of this lime is kind of a pale blue color, so, and that's the lightest color that is visible, so I'm going to use that as my base. Honestly, the technique that we're using today is a little watercolory. It's kind of the way that I would build color up if I were doing this with a watercolor. The main difference is that the watercolor mostly sits on top of itself, but the alcohol ink works right in. But that's fun. That That's special in its own way, so work with that. So we're using that nice, warm, limey green color. Again, still pretty dilute, still quite a bit of alcohol in your mix, and you're just modeling with your brush. You're not doing any detailing. You're just kind of filling in some nice, limey, mottled color here. The leaf is mostly yellow, as you saw from uh, the photo that I showed you before. We're just building up a little bit of interest. We're just building up some nice, bright mottling here. I'm going to keep working with this light green for a little bit, both in the leaf and in the detailing in the stem. There's a good deal of shadowing on the stem, uh, particularly underneath the leaf, obviously. Um, and I want to use that mid-light green to start reinforcing those. I'm not trying to do too much at a time. I'm not trying to uh, build my tones too quickly because the, the lovely thing about alcohol ink is that uh, it does dry really quickly and uh, it does melt or it does activate when you add more ink to it so you can keep working into the same area you want to be careful not to evenly wet the whole thing to melt everything that you've done but if it's only your brush that's wet you're not going to run so much of a risk of liquefying your painting that happens more when you're just dropping colors or using larger amounts. Here you can see I'm using a dry palette and I'm just using a drip of alcohol at a time. Even when I'm using a very wet mix, like even when I was doing the yellow wash on the leaf, there wasn't much, uh, there wasn't much alcohol used. It certainly didn't run out of the leaf and all over the paper. So you see I'm just building up this green color here, um, trying to stay on the, uh, the sections of the leaf in between the veins, because the veins on the leaf are very light yellow. And here you see I'm even erasing out a little bit with a Q-tip, and I also do with a paper towel a little bit, just a little folded corner of paper towel or a Q-tip. Wet with your syringe, and just lift out any color that might have gotten too dark on the vein areas of the leaf because that's one of the only areas that will give contrast those light colored veins and the darker brighter green patches on the leaves so don't forget about those kinds of details that will add contrast because this is not a high contrast image the differences in values that we do have and the differences in contrast that we do have we want to work to our advantage the leaf and stem are very pale colored, and they're not high contrast subjects, but they are, like it or not, right there and want to be seen. So we want to make sure that uh, the contrast is high, not only on the line, but in the areas where we can add contrast on the leaf and stem that we do. Now you see I've put some nice bright green, like a grass green, in my palette. It's uh, Mojito by... Uh 
ranger if you're using ranger colors like i said if you're not just use any nice bright grass green and i'm really just mottling all the way down the contour of the line here before i start working into the center resist the urge to just paint solid colors because a lime skin is not smooth it has a very obvious texture and if you just paint the whole thing perfectly smooth and smooth brush strokes it might look circular but it probably won't look like a citrus fruit because a citrus fruit is all dimply it's one thing that makes something that's relatively square or round as it were unique so work that citrus peel texture and just model your brush all the way down your fruit and don't worry about trying to keep everything even i'm trying to keep the color nice and concentrated down on the bottom of the fruit because that is where the shadows are we have a nice highlight on the top right of the fruit and we have a nice dark core shadow on the right on the bottom so i'm just dappling with this mojito color up into the center of the fruit and i'm going to make that dappling more and more sparse as i move higher up i'm going right over top of that light blue we're going to cover a lot of it up but what we don't cover it up what we don't cover up is going to end up being the highlight here we're going to run right up the stem and all the darkest points with the mojito um, i've also got a little bit of everglades there in the corner which is making it darker i love everglades by ranger it is such a beautiful color it's probably my go-to green i love it it's oh it's out of this world okay now we're going to take out the black the black i'm using is by pinata honestly i have never tried ranger's black but i can tell you and, and pinata black is the only one that i have used so far but i absolutely love it it is beautiful 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 it's got a lovely um thick but uniform smooth texture and it is super jet black it is lovely it ha doesn't have a blue tint i love this ink like i say if um if pinata's other inks uh are anything like it if the quality of the black ink is a reflection on pinata's other inks then i vote yes although i haven't tried them yet and i would love to so enough nattering here we're backing up all the contrast or punching up all the contrast as uh, as it were in the background, I'm adding black into areas that are, are dark and uh, that I want to be darker. I'm going right up to the edge of the line with my brush. Um, you can see that, well, I don't know if you can see very well, but my brush is, uh, it's very, very frayed. So it works really nicely for this kind of dry brushing that I'm working on in the background. I'm not using a whole lot of alcohol. I'm mostly just using ink on the end of my brush and just kind of dabbing it on and when I'm happy with the general overall contrast I'm going to take my little sharpie and I'm just going to clean up a couple edges where the darkest dark of the background meets the lightest edges of my subject I'll add a little bit of uh, pointillism as it were in uh, in the skin of my lime as well to add to the texture I had a great time painting this fun, bright line today, and I hope that you guys liked it too. If you dug this video, please feel free to visit my Instagram, where you can see all the stuff that I'm working on and uh, folks I'm collaborating with. Please feel free to like this video and maybe even subscribe to this channel so that you will not miss the next one. I've got some fun stuff coming up. I um, The next video that I'm going to be putting out is going to be really, really fun. It is both a watercolor painting and a French translation of one of my favorite poems, If by Rudyard Kipling. And uh, I ran into an issue uh, a couple of weeks ago, or I guess a month ago or so now. I wanted to share this poem with my co-workers because I absolutely adore this poem and I was studying it with my son. And, but most of my coworkers um, are not English speaking, and so I really wanted to share it with them, but I was not satisfied with the French translations that I found of this poem, so I thought that I would try it myself, and I want to share that with you next time. Thanks for joining me. I will catch you all on the flip side. <laughs>